that would find a text in the book of Romans and probably a, uh, a text that has all kinds of condemnation written upon it, but in it I think that we find something that tells us about the ingratitude of the heart. I want to say to you this morning, not all Christians are thankful. They're not thankful. They haven't learned how to be thankful. They haven't been taught how to be thankful. Well, if anybody needs to be thankful today, it's we that are the body of Christ. Yeah. We that are saved and born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. That's what Paul talks about here in Romans chapter number 1, verse number 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the, his eternal power and God is, so that they are without excuse. Because then when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Nice. Neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, possessing Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. <coughs> Likewise also the men, leaving the nature, natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meek. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God give them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, de debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasting, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unworthy, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do these. 
Verse 21. Paul says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were it thankful. The ingratitude of the heart is what Paul is talking about. I don't think this is a scripture that I would want to read if I were were to open the Bible on Thanksgiving Day before we had a meal and want to bring the scripture that would inspire them or motivate them in any way uh, concerning Thanksgiving. I don't think this would be the scripture. However, it, it, it does seem to say something to us today about how that man failed God, how that he would not retain God in his knowledge would not have God even though that he knew there was a God. <clears throat> Invisible things that God, uh, that, that they uh, know of God was, was clearly seen in the creation that God created. They knew there had to be a supernatural power behind all of that. But Paul, in summary here, says they would not retain God in their knowledge. They did not want God. Mm -hmm. They did not want God. And this is the people... Amen. That we could talk about from the time of Adam back in the Garden of Eden to right here at Pine Mountain this morning. Down through the ages, God has seen those people that would not have God. That they chose idolatry. They chose the things uh, 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 away from God, the things that was contrary to the will of God. They chose that. They would not retain God in their knowledge. Uh, that's true, brother, sister, of uh, every man, every woman that's ever lived apart from God. And it's still true this morning. It's still uh, uh, true the whole human race across the world this morning. The, 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 the people believe there's a God. They believe in a supernatural God. They, all they got to look around and know that there's got to be something that made all that we see. Made the oceans, the seas, the stars, uh, all the all the galaxies, all the things that are today. That they know that there has to be something, someone responsible with. Something responsible. Now, I know what the atheists say. I understand we're not going there this morning. But we believe there's a God. We believe there's a God. We believe that he did all of this. We, we don't understand all that God's done. He, he didn't expect us to understand. God's too big for me. He's too big for me to understand. I can't understand the wisdom and the knowledge of God. I can't understand the power of God. I can't understand that he speaks and it's done. I, that, that's besides me. But I know there's a God. Yeah. And I know that there's a God that we need to retain knowledge of God in our hearts and in our minds. And think upon Him and think upon His grace and mercy to us. Paul's talking about a crowd here that didn't believe that. They're still alive today, brother. They're still alive today. <laughs> but that, that, that includes, there's people sitting in Pentecostal churches today. There's people sitting in Methodist churches, Baptist churches, Lutheran churches, Presbyterian churches, Catholic churches. And brother, there's people sitting there today that will not retain God in their knowledge. They will not have God. They will not believe in a God that Paul is talking about here this morning. Even though they knew there was a God, they would not have God. They would not retain Him in their knowledge. That's what Paul is bringing condemnation upon them. Brother, you can look at all the churches in the Yellow Pages today. I often like to open a phone book and look at all the churches, churches I don't know, know about uh, 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 in, in the Yellow Pages. Every one of them, brother, has, has people sitting in them that's guilty of what Paul is talking about here this morning. That they will not have God, they will not retain Him in the law. And they will turn to idolatry. They will turn to sin. And sin will pay its consequences according to the promise of God. They'll have the wrath of God upon them uh, uh, for the rejection of God. That's still true this morning. But here you see the results of that. God said there's no excuse. He mentions that three times. That he gave them over, gave them over, gave them over. Finally to a reprobate mind. To a reprobate mind. And God can't touch them. God can't touch them. So therefore, amen, God has his wrath upon them. Uh, and, and they turn to idolatry. They turn to the things, amen, that please them now. Uh, they they think, turn to the thing that profit them under the sun. If I may use some of, uh, of Solomon's language. They love the things that profit them under the sun. Amen. On earth, that's all they're interested in. And the result... Brother, there's morality uh, 
uh, immor immorality that is abundant. He mentions all these things here in our text today. Immorality. Uh, uh, There's dishonorable passions that they have toward each other. A, a, a woman with a woman and a man with a man here. Lesbianism, homosexualism. Yeah, that's what he's talking about here. Paul condemns that. God condemns that. And, and, and he said that's the result of people that tries to make it without God and tries to go down a pathway away from God. The result, brother, there's a social breakdown. Look at America now. Look at the families in America now. Aren't they, uh, isn't it pitiful what the devil has done to our families in America? Yeah, yeah. That's what Paul is talking about. A social breakdown, brother, yeah. in, 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 our, in, in our world today. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Uh, he turned them to the consequence of their own sin. Sure. You reap what you sow. Exactly. You reap what you sow. Right. You reap what you sow. Brother, sister, that's a good, good message in itself here this morning. But that's not what I want to preach. I want to give you a little background. Uh, God said you deserve this punishment. said you're without excuse. But I want to go back to verse 21. And he said, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power of God is so they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they. The ingratitude of the heart. They were not thankful to God. They could not be thankful to God. But the sister, I'll say it again. I, 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 I pray that's not true of anyone here this morning. That, 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 that we have ingratitude in our heart. That we fail to understand how God has blessed us. How God has rained His grace and mercy and love upon us. How God has opened His hands uh, 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 and blessed us so wonderfully. Oh, there ought to be a, a, a gratitude flowing from our hearts and our lips this morning in this season. And, and God guard us from the ingratitude that might be in our heart. When I read this text, I, I paused and looked upon my life. And, and, and I thought about it. Pastor, are you really thankful? Are you really thankful God for what He's done for you all these years? And, and the things that He's done, His providence upon your life. Uh, uh, are you really thankful for those things? I, and I had to look down deep in the recess and confines of my heart and, and, and make sure that, that I had, amen, a, a, a proper gratitude. I'm not sure that I found that. I'm not sure that I'm as thankful as I ought to be before God for all the things that He's contributed in my life through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. In gratitude of the heart. Amen. Amen. You see, when, when, when you have ingratitude in your heart, brother, sister, you have no desire to honor God. Somehow you feel you make the law. Somehow you feel, amen, that God owes you. Somehow that you've had good luck, whatever, and, and things have just been good for you in life, and, and you don't owe God anything. So therefore you fail to glorify God. When, when you have that ingratitude in your heart, you can put a measure stick on your life as well. How much do you praise and worship God for the things that He has done for you. Look inside of your heart. Look into the recesses and confines of your being and see if you really are giving God the proper thanksgiving for all that He has done for you. Amen. We refuse to glorify God. What is the purpose of our lives? What were we born? To glorify God. Yes. And to honor Him, to, to bring pleasure to, to Almighty God. That's the reason that we are here this morning. That's the reason that we woke in, that, that we awakened this morning. Was to bring glory to God in this day. If we don't bring glory to God in this day, then we missed the purpose for what God awakened us today. Yeah. To bring to Him that is rightfully His and don't belong to anybody else. Nobody's done for you what God's done for you. Yeah. Nobody can do for you what God has done for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No. Said they did not give thanks. Charles Spurgeon once said, he said, you, can, you can't say anything worse about a man or a woman that is not thankful to those who have been a blessing to them, benefactors to them. Now, he's talking here about anybody. And he said, that is certainly true about God. The worst thing you can say about a man that he's unthankful to God. 
for all that God has done for them, for the church, that they're unthankful to God, for all that God has done for them in Christ Jesus the Lord, that they're unthankful. <laughs> what happens when we fail to give God the glory and, and the thanksgiving and the gratitude out of our heart? Well, we, it's almost as if he's despised. That, 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 that we don't reckon him to be anything to our life. And, and that's true in, in the modern day church. Uh, everything is ignored about him. They, they don't care whether they go to church or not. They don't care whether they pray or not, read the Bible, just neglect it. Refuse. Uh, he, he, he's just forgotten seemingly in their life. This is a time of year that we ought to have a refreshment and restoration of that gratitude from our heart about God and about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, the triune God that has blessed us. I thank God for that this morning. Brother, we're going to, uh, most of us will have a good meal uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, uh, and, and we ought to be thankful for that meal. Yeah. When we gather with our family, we ought to say, God, I thank you for family. God, I thank you for children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, whoever they may be. Amen. God, I, 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 I thank you. Uh, amen. That I'm able to walk. I'm able to talk. I'm able to see. I'm able to hear. I'm able to have another. God, I thank you for all of that. Amen. The providences of God. God, I thank you for what's on our table. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. For what we're about to hear. God, I thank you. I thank you. Just fill the house with amen. thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Let it roll out of our heart. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> uh, for, for a good night. I thank you for a good day. I thank you for friends. I, th I, I thank you for neighbors. I thank you for these things that God's providence has blessed me with in life. God just opened his hand and blessed me with these things. Amen. Thank you for a good home to live in. Amen. Thank you for a bed to lay down in life. Thank you for help. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for all of these things that I take for granted. Lord, I want to change all of that. Because I see ingratitude in my heart, Lord, that I don't thank you enough. Amen. Paul said, neither were they thankful. Yeah. The ingratitude of the heart. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I thank you, Father, for, for a good mother and a good father. I, I thank you for a good family. I thank you for all of those things, Lord, that, 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 that I failed to thank you for. I failed and just took them for granted, Lord, and didn't rise up. And realize how good they were. I thank you for the grace of God. I thank you, Amen. hallelujah, for, 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 for the Bible. I thank you for a church. Thank you for Amen. God's speaking. Amen. I thank you for all of these things, Amen. Lord, that I've taken for granted. Amen. Oh, God, forgive me for the ingratitude of my heart. Amen. The ingratitude of my heart Amen. that I failed to thank you for the thing that your providence has made so clear to me this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, for the great mercies that you have expanded to us mm -hmm. through your Son. Everything that we have in life, brother, sister, God's mercy made possible for us. Right. If we got it honestly, right. we got it this, that, or other way. Uh, uh, it may be different, but we got it honestly. God made it possible for us to have it. All good gifts comes from the Father of us. All of them, brother. Amen. Well, let me, let me talk to you a minute. With a hard heart, people, here according to Paul, said, neither were they thankful. Hard hearted people didn't believe that they needed God, that God had done anything for them. And, uh, we may rise up when we're just blessed in life and say, boy, I've had some good luck. <laughs> That's degrading God. Isn't it? Yeah, that's right. No such thing as good luck. Mm -hmm. Whoever told you that? That's an old marriage proverb that should have been thrown away a long time. No sense, God. You blessed today, God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been yeah. blessed in life, God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You got anything, God gave it to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Brother, no use me get up this morning and say I've had good luck just to raise you. God kept me through the night. Yeah. God could have yeah. taken that heartbeat away from me and I've been dead yeah. as last yeah. year's church, yeah. brother. But God has been good to us. Amen. It's not good luck. Unthankful heart might base their blessing on luck. I know where my blessing comes from. I understand. Brother, I used to preach in a colored church. And they, 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 they take about three hours getting up and telling and, and thanking God for what he done for me. Everyone in the church 
right down the aisle will tell, get up and testify what God done for. And brother, I tell you, got spiritual nature. Why? Got spiritual. Some of them, some of them old colored people get up about 80, 85 years old, brother, get shot. I'll tell you one thing. They knew down deep in their heart what it meant to be appreciative of God for the things he done for. Church, I believe we've forgotten that by and large. Modern day age in which we live. Gratitude of our hearts. Oh my my. I hear people say, well, I'm a hard worker. Uh, I, I've accumulated things in life. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Well, where did you get the strength? They meant to do that. Uh, where, who woke you up in the morning to go yes. out to work? Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Talk to me this morning. Who gave you the brains to be a good businessman, to make good decisions? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> did, you, did you make your brains yourself? I feel some of us have. God gave us a brain to see, to be wise, to make wise decisions. God gave it all to us. You don't have a thing. Brother, these are responsible for in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. We owe everything to God. My God, I just want to stand here but before all and thank you, Lord, for what you've done for this day. I could have been dead a long time ago. Hallelujah. But God's kept me to this point. I could have been a, a lot of things, but I'm not a lot of things. Because God changed my life. And He changed your life for the good. And He's put His blessing up. I tell you, somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord, this morning for what He's done for us. Glory Amen. to God. And get that ingratitude out of our heart. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of God now. I can a fool. We ought to write fool across our head if we think that God has not blessed us. Amen. Amen. Fool. Just walk down to the town of Independence and say, I'm a fool. I'm a, what are you? Well, I think I'm not what I got by love. Amen. No, you didn't get anything but love. There's no such thing as love. It's called grace, mercy, and love. That's where you got it. From a God that loves you supreme beyond anything that you can imagine this morning. Yes. Right. Well, I've got every reason to praise him. <laughs> Amen. Well, there's two signs of an ungrateful heart. <laughs> what time is it? Well, I've got 20 minutes. So I'll... <laughs> two signs of an ungrateful heart. First of all, we receive from God's hand His marvelous grace. His providence is daily. Daily! And we have no concern about where they came from. We receive from God daily. And we have no concern from where they came from. That's exactly what Paul's saying here. Yeah. When they knew God was true, yet they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. God's waiting for his children to thank him. Praise him and worship. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord. Mm -hmm. Remember when he saved you? Amen. Your life may not be like my life. But you were hell bound. Yeah, right. I don't care how moral you were. <laughs> I don't care how clean. You may be clean as a whistle. But you were lost when God saved you. I thank God for the night that he saved me. All of the years down through the Thank God when he picked me up out of the mud hole in those 50 years. Now I know some of you never been in the mud hole that you got saved. But I've been in the mud hole. Amen. I, I, I failed. I, I flopped, if you please. Yeah. Pastor, you should know you, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God loving me enough to pick me up out of the mud hole. And say, hey, get started again. I forgive you. That's the kind of God that I want you to thank. Uh, thank this morning. That's the kind of God that I want you to pay home to this morning. Recognize that He is the source of everything good in your life. Everything good in your life. We receive from His hands daily. And we fail to recognize. Amen. Well, let me give you another. We grumble about what we don't have. And that's a sign of a heart that you're invited. We grumble. If we got $500, we want a dollar. 
We got 5,000, we want 10,000. God said to be sure you that which you have. Amen. Huh? Right. <laughs> He's given, he given us enough. Compare us today with the poverty right. down in yeah. India. Yes. Bangladesh. Right. Compare our, uh, us this morning. We're all going home to uh, some kind of a lunch after a while. They down there with a soup bowl dishing it out a little bit at a time. Right. Over in, over in the war in Israel. I see him yesterday with a big tub there. Picking it out. Little kids fighting. Yes. Yeah, just about that. God has blessed us, church. Hallelujah. I don't have no reason to come here and grumble because of what I don't have. I need to praise him for what I do have. Hallelujah. There's no more than a strip of bacon when I go home to Thank you, Lord, for the strip of bacon and the biscuit and a cup of coke of water. All of that God has made possible to us. Oh, we need to quit grumbling about what we don't have. Yes. Amen. Be the covetous and greedy. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, when I started back, I, I, I saw in my own life the ingratitude. I said, don't you thank you? Yes, yes, but not enough. Not enough. I want to make a statement just more. I don't have a thing in my life that is honest. That God didn't give to me or make a way for me to have. Yes. Amen. I can sit down here and take a piece of paper and stop see what God's done for this man. Yeah. I've told you before there was a time that men and Linda didn't have two quarters to work, work together. I was ashamed. Worked hard, both of us worked hard. Just hard, just hard, difficult. God changes things when you serve him. God will help you along the way. God will pick you up when you're down. God will surprise you sometimes and surprise us. I mean, you know, I mean, you know that God is a God of surprises. He is. He is surprising. I don't have a thing that He didn't make for me, didn't make possible for me to have. It's true. The gratitude of the heart. Yes. Let me summarize what I said this morning. Number one, don't take nothing for granted. Yes. <coughs> don't get up. Someday something good happens. You say, look, look what I made happen in my life. You may be a part of that, but I'll tell you that God initiated in your life. Amen. Amen. I got a raise down at the job. I got a promotion. Get along somewhere. Thank God for it. Amen. He's been working on it. He's been, he's been working on that promotion for it. How do you know that? I know that. The men that have done that. Amen. God is a good God. Don't take nothing for granted. He opens his hands of generosity to every one of us, brother, sister, and he blesses us. Thank God for where you are today. Thank God for what you have. Thank God that you're a Christian. Thank God that you believe the Bible. Thank God that Jesus is coming again. Thank God you're going to spend eternity with him. God. <laughs> Don't take nothing for granted. God's behind all that is good in our lives. Let, let, me, let me mention number two here. I, I, I pray that God will open the eyes of my heart to appreciate His blessing. I didn't say my eyes, I, I said my heart. All good things come from your heart. You got to praise God, you got to get it in your heart. Girl singing this morning, I'll tell you what they got in my heart. Yes. Help me. Yes. They don't know it, but they've a foundation in what I want to say here this morning. Well, I feel the presence of God. Cry a little bit. That's all right for you to cry about the blessings of God. Amen. Cry blessing. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. But we need to be appreciative for his blessing. Let me give you another. Thank God for the providences that happens in your life every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. I, I should have named this sermon uh, 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 Thanksgiving 365. Because that's how often he blesses you. Yeah. Not on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Not on a Wednesday. 365.
65 days. Pastor, I have brought. He's still blessing you. Yeah. Yes. He's working on you, brother. He's working. He's trying to tell us something. Hallelujah. And all of us. I thank God this morning. Uh, amen. For the existence of God. I thank God for God Father, God Son, God Holy Ghost. I thank God they're all working in my life. I thank God that I, when I don't understand it, they're still working in my life. I thank God for, that I'm able to walk, able to talk, able to think. I thank God for all of these things that I have maybe taken for granted. I thank God for the Bible. Thank God for the preached word, the taught word. I thank God, amen, that we can worship in the house of God on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Sit down beside each other and love one another. I thank God for all of those yeah. things. Yeah. All the providences yeah. of God. I thank God again for the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I believe that all three of those persons are working in our lives today. Yes, well, Pastor, I don't believe that. Well, you don't know the Bible. It's still right. And I'll give you some Bible 101 this morning. I thank God that all Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are working in your life this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. I thank God that we're receiving what God gives us this morning. I thank God that He's placed us in a good place. I thank God for the hope that is in our life. I thank God that one day there's going to be a rapture. I thank God one day the dead and first are going to rise first. And we're going to be called up to meet Him in the air. I thank God for all of that. I thank God that there's going to be a new Jerusalem. I thank God there's going to be a millennium. I thank God that Jesus is going to sit on the throne in heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be down with it. I thank God. I don't have time to build in gratitude in my heart. God is good. God is good. I thank God for every way, for everything, and every place. I thank God for it all. I thank God for the past. I thank Him for the present. I thank Him for the future. He's in control. He's in control. My, 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 my. How could a man not be thankful to God? Oh, how could we be so hard on that we be not thankful to God? I want to go back to a portion of Scripture. If I can find it in the, in, in the book of Psalms. Well, I didn't mark it. Maybe this talk to you. Man, so what shall a man drink unto the Lord? Should they offer a praise, thanksgiving, amen? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits? Uh, uh, I will pay my vows unto the Lord. I will be faithful to God. I will render thanksgiving unto the Lord for all his benefits. Brother, sister, that ought to be daily with us. We shouldn't wait till Sunday morning to be thankful to God. You're going down the road driving, thank you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I get all excited about that. Amen. All once uh, 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 something hits me, tells me that God just blessed me, I get all excited about that. Hallelujah. I hear that God's answered one of my prayers. I get excited about it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He encourages me to pray for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll tell you something this morning, brother. You can't beat what you got in your relationship with God. Paul said, when they knew God, they failed to glorify Him and said they just wasn't thankful. Mm -hmm. Well, sister, I, I believe that's a curse upon the church across the world this morning. They're not grateful for what God's done for them. If you knew my life and knew where He pulled me out of, you could appreciate the grace of God. When I didn't know what to do, where to turn, didn't bend over on the brinks of going north and south. God came up. Changed my whole perspective about life. I love him this morning. I'm ashamed of that. Yes. I sure appreciate his providences on my life. He, he, he's done things for me that I never thought. He called me to preach. I don't know why I'm 
That's what I, what I thought when God called me to preach. I ran from God. I didn't want to preach. Couldn't sleep. Got to drive the ducks. Couldn't work. Until one day I went up a preacher's lane in a work truck. Couldn't stand there. God drove me crazy. And, and I couldn't eat. I lost weight. God wouldn't let me loose. And I went up there and I called that preacher out. And, and, I, and I said, Brother Aker, I said, I think God's called me to preach. He said, well, I knew that he had, but I want you to know. I want you to know. Never understood that. Never understood yeah. 52 years later why God called me to preach. But I thank him for I've met beautiful people in churches, eight pastorates now. Got beautiful people right here this morning. That'd be the final. But in the one, 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 in